Let's talk about stratification with cohort studies. Okay. Uh, this should look extremely familiar because it's exactly the same process, except now we're talking about relative risks. Because there's a, a, and where we're talking about the delta percent, now we're talking about crude and mental pencil relative risks. As a preface, this is not um, this is not stratified, but as a preface, I want to show you two types of denominator data in relative risks, or in um, in cohort studies. Uh, the first one is what we've talked about already, where we have an incidence among the exposed, incidence among the unexposed, where we have the number of cases exposed, the number of controls exposed, the number of cases unexposed, the number of controls unexposed. However, we can also have an instance where we have only cases exposed and unexposed, no control data, but we have person time of exposure and person time of unexposed. Okay, we can divide up the, number, the amount of time that people have been exposed, people have been unexposed. So now we have instance density for the exposed, instance density for the unexposed group. It's in, the, the, the resulting relative risk is in, interpreted the same way. But the person time denominator data is probably more realistic in most uh, industrial applications. You're unlikely to keep data on people who don't get sick in industry. Yeah. Just like the case only data we were talking about uh, earlier today. However, you are likely to be able to distinguish the person time of exposure and a person time of unexposure. That's much more likely to be available to you. Okay. <clears throat> Again, the chi squared wall. Just take odds ratio and, and, and replace it with relative risk. Same thing. Mental potential relative risk. This is a little bit different, like a little bit different, uh, but nevertheless, it's the same idea. But once again, be careful to add all of the numerator and then add all of the denominator before you do the division. Uh, mental Hensel chi squared is identical, and uh, the, the Mental Hensel relative risk is identical. Except we substitute the, the relative risk in front with the odds ratio. There is a standardized uh, for non homogeneous data, uh, uh, for heterogeneous data, and it is analogous again to, the, uh, to that which we have for uh, the um, uh, homogeneous, uh, for the um, case control. Okay, so let's take a look at. Gender as a potential uh, confounding variable, and smoking behavior in relation to lung cancer. Right. Whether you smoke or whether you don't smoke, whether you're male or female. So here's our uh, stratum-specific relative risks. Both of them significantly elevated. Doesn't look like there's effect, not very much effect modification, does it? It looks like the risk for males and females is about the same for smoking, it appears. Uh, our mental pencil relative risk and our crude relative risk, pretty similar. Obviously homogeneous, and this is significantly elevated when controlled for gender. So let's, and uh, this is count not denominator. Look at our evaluation. Homogeneous, mental pencil, 1%, uh, delta percent is one, so you no know, confounding due to gender. Uh, there's a significantly elevated risk associated with smoking, even adjusting for gender. Uh, it's confirmed by the confidence interval. And there's apparently no effect modification because the risk for males and the risk for females is virtually identical. If you round it to one significant digit, it is identical. Okay, 1.59 versus 1.61. Um, for a non-stratified analysis, again, this is an aside going to the instance density, because we've been talking about that. Uh, this is the risk estimate, 
The test statistic now is slightly different. We have a different stratospecific test estimate, and we have a slightly different confidence interval. But still very similar. So this is an example. If we have counseling, and whether or not there are deaths, and this is counseling services in a um, mental health facility, okay, where someone seeks counseling services, and whether they suffer death or suicide. Okay, so let's look at it that way. This implies that counseling has a protective effect. Okay, I, I think I believe that and that the, the people who seek counseling are less likely to end up killing themselves than someone who doesn't. Okay. Here we don't have any non-cases. All we have is the cases of people who commit suicide, but we do have a, a sense of the person time, so we can get an incidence density ratio, or an incidence density for the exposed and for unexposed. So in this case, the exposure is counseling, right? Of something that has a protective, a <coughs> protective effect associated with it. Again, this is the chi square of Wald. There's slightly different formulas because now we're talking about incidence densities. However, it's the same idea. We have the chi squared Wald, the Mantel pencil, the, the chi squared, the confidence interval. And then we have a standardized, if, in case we experience homogeneous or non-homogeneous data. All right. So let's say that we stratify those data in order to, by age group, because we think there might be an effect associated with age group and uh, seeking counseling, and whether or not there's a protective effect of counseling. Okay. Looks like it not, might not be an association for the younger people. As we get older, it looks like um, still no association, no association, and no association in any of these. So probably we don't have too much of effect modification because it's not significantly elevated. Although there might be some hint here that older people, say 30 and over, might experience more benefit. Now, even though it's not significantly elevated, they might experience more benefit. So we have a mental pencil and a crude um, uh, statistic that look very similar. And when you adjust for age group, all of a sudden, we have a significantly, uh, a significant protective effect adjusted for age group for counsel. So even though not one stratum was significant, when we do our analysis and adjust for age, we suddenly get significance and our crude looks like it's significant. Okay. Our chi-squared wall is homogeneous, so we can proceed with mantel pencil. Okay. So homogen homogeneous. Uh, it's similar 10%. It's right at the cusp. But it looks like there's probably not a confounding effect. Um, we have a statistically significant association. Uh, by the, it, it looks like um, there is, it does include one, confirms that, that's what I'm trying to get out. And the effect modification, like I said, it's somewhat questionable, but it looks like the youngest age group may experience the least benefit, according to these data even though they're not significant. If we look at the protective effect for these, for these relative risks versus that, there's, there, there's some potential for effect modification. Okay. So that's a, a, a potential um, for confounding, because it's at the cusp, I put age as a potential confounder. Since it's at the cusp, I say it's no confounding, but this would be the effect, is that age will influence your, your likelihood of seeking counseling. Age is associated with, with death, um, but the counseling and death may not have 
the relationship that may be actually age. So I just have a question about potential follow-up study for this. So if they were to follow this up, could they test the number of hours a person spent count at a counselor then to try to get more information out of this? Or sure, sure. Yeah, if you wanted to do a real cohort study with this, yes, you, you'd look at that. And, uh, and this, uh, even though it's not explicit in it, that may actually be what is in our person time. Okay, that may be what's there. And that uh, among these four, there's a total of 66 hours. Among these five, there's a total of 79 hours. Or, um, uh, if that's what it is. Yeah, if that's what it is, yeah. Okay. Another person time example, this one is in seniority versus exposure to metalworking fluids. Uh, this, is a, this is an adjustment of uh, a study they were doing Ford when I was there. Because anyone who works metal lathe in that shop is exposed to metalworking fluids. Because they're standing in a metal lathe, what do they have to do? They put lubricant on it. And so they get exposed to a lot of that, even if they wear respirators, and not all of them do wear respirators for a variety of reasons. So they're exposed to metalworking fluids. So we're going to see if, there, if, if there's any sort of confounding relationship based on plus or minus 10 years, uh, below or above 10 years of experience. Uh, relative risk here looks like it's substantially more elevated, so this effect modification right off the bat. We have our chi-squared wall highly heterogeneous, so we can't do a, um, a mantle pencil. We can do the crude, we can do the standardized, but um, you can see that the, between the crude and the standardized there's a huge difference. Okay. Analysis with that. So first thing right off the bat, heterogeneous strata, can't use mantle pencil adjustment, we have to use the standardized adjustment. That's 117% dif dif uh, difference. So that means the seniority does introduce a substantial confounder. Because confounder is that the more senior you are, the more likely you are to suffer from upper respiratory uh, problems. And so the, the, there's, effect, there's confounding and effect modification. You go back and look at the original data, you can see that the, the more experience you have, the more upper respiratory disease you risk. <clears throat> what I did here is I gave a, a, a more extensive interpretation because now we have to do, uh, because they're heterogeneous, and we can't do a summary statistic, we have to do more extensive um, evaluation at each one of the strata. And each one of the strata shows that we have significantly elevated uh, relative risks for both groups. Although it's a lot higher, the risk is much higher for the high, uh, and it's significant for the people who have been working greater than 10 years. Drawing. Okay, so let's, let's recap the methods that we've talked about, because I went through a lot back <coughs> right to the beginning and recapped them. We are looking for, remember with bias, you can't do anything in the analysis, right? You're, you're done right now. Uh, but you can evaluate confounding effect modification, and statistical significance. That's what we're trying to do with these analyses. The first one we looked at was matching, okay? Is match case control. And what did we evaluate with that? We evaluate confounding. We can't evaluate effect modification, so I'll, I'll say that confounding and EM. Okay. So we can evaluate confounding, we cannot evaluate effect quantification. And we did not do matched 
relative risk. We did not do matched cohort because it's too complicated and, it's, and so it's, it's not even really worth thinking about for, for our purposes. We would go to a, 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 another type of, of uh, regression. Okay, so that was, uh, that was what we talked about at the end of the um, session last week. Case control studies matching. Next thing we did is we talked about stratification. For case control and for cohort. evaluate both confounding and effect modification. I won't even bother talking about statistical significance because that you can do for everything that we've talked about. I'll just talk about confounding and effect modification. And for cohort, confounding and effect modification. And for cohort, we have two types. We have count denominator Remember, in, uh, for all stratification, the first thing you evaluate is homogeneity. Homogeneity allows you to choose between uh, the Mantel Hensel and the standardized. For all, for case control, for cohort, for count denominator, person time denominator. Everything. So uh, sorry. Is this Mansell, Hensel, and then S? That's so uh, standardized. Okay. This <coughs> flowchart, as long as you substitute relative risk for odds ratio, holds whenever you do one of these problem sets. You can give yourself a generic version of this. I repeated it over and over so that you would recognize that the same flow is true for all of these. Well, not match, but for all the stratified, stratification. First thing you do is evaluate homogeneity. And then you can proceed with mental pencil. Then you, com uh, you, you compute your crude and stratospecific odds ratios. And then you do your delta percent to determine whether or not there's confounding based on your stratification variable. Then you compute your mental pencil chi-squared, so you've gotten to this point in your mental pencil, and evaluate whether or not there is effects adjusted for the stratification variable. Then you evaluate your effect, effect modification by inspecting the stratum-specific odds ratios, relative risks, whatever. That gives you data. This gives you information on confounding. This gives you information on effect modification. This gives you information on the adjusted uh, summary statistic that will tell you whether there's an effect present for your aggregate data. What, what, what were you? Oh, this is a lot. Okay. okay. My intent with the, with the homework is to give you large questions of these so that it gives you an opportunity to practice. On the exam, I wouldn't give you more than two strata. In homework, I don't feel so constrained. It gives you practice. Okay. If the, and, and just like Kirk pointed out, we do, I don't have a flow chart. 
and I don't have that de little delta percent there, I'll probably make up a little sheet of, of, of something like this that's generic and hand it out to you. Because I don't, you know, memorize I don't think we have the odds ratio crude, but that's pretty easy to remember. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, the, well, the crude odds ratio is the same as your. It's the A1 plus B1. Or sorry, uh, A1 no, plus, A1 plus A2 plus A3. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, you collapse it. And by collapsing it, I mean. Take this first one. So it's, it's taking away the stratification. So I'm just looking at pe people, cases who, who exercise. Well, there's 41 plus 86 of those. And so what I take these two, do, uh, what I do is I take these two strata, combine them, and then just go through the, the, the regular and analytical approach for an answer for a uh, case control. Does anybody have questions about any, I, I, uh, I don't want to gloss over the calculations, but they didn't seem that complicated. It's more accounting than anything. But if, do you have questions about the calculations? So if, uh, if I asked one of you uh, how to calculate the odds ratio of truth of the chi squared wall, if you look back at the formula, you need to understand where it came from. <laughs> is, that is that a true statement? Everyone raise your hand if it's a true statement for you. Okay, Julian, a true statement for you? I'm working on it. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, you can come and talk to me about it. Yes. Uh, so if it's heterogeneous data, once we do our um, wall, our chi square wall, and it's greater than the critical value, 3.841, mm -hmm. and we do the odds ratio for the standardization, is that you call it? Um, yeah, the, odds ratio, the standardized odds ratio. Standardized odds ratio. What do we do from there? Um, okay. Good question. Let's go back here and take a look at I guess that's why I was asking if we were going to do one later. Yes, yeah, and, and we did one, but maybe that wasn't enough. <laughs> okay. So let's take a look at the at the and the process is the same whether it's cohort or case control, case um, uh, case denominator or person time denominator it doesn't matter. But in this case, uh, the chi squared wall is huge, so that means this is heterogeneous. Correct. We can't use mantle pencil. So, uh, first of all, that's the flow. I get to this point, can't do mantle pencil, but I do compare the crude relative risk with the standardized, with, and we go back to the standardized formula. For person time denominator data, that standardized formula is that, okay? Uh, did, did I really screw up my... No, nope, it's there. It's, it's there? Cool. Yeah. Um, so, um, I can say that there is, that that's dissimilar, and therefore seniority is a substantial compounder. Stratospecific uh, implies that there's not only confounding, but effect modification. So to bolster that approach, all I can do at this point is my stratospecific analysis with my relative risk, chi-squared, and confidence intervals. And then, and that's that's the end of my analysis. It's quite a bit simpler if it's heterogeneous. So you're just doing an independent analysis. That's right, yeah. yeah. I'm doing all, well, just, just each strata by itself and interpreting it. said that, <clears throat> let's take a look at analytical methods homework. And we already did question one. Question two is another real study uh, from the British Medical Journal about smoking and lung cancer, stratified by gender, 
And also the exposure. What, what, what di what's different here and interesting about it is the exposure um, uh, definition. The exposure definition for the first one, the second one is what we would expect. Did you smoke or you didn't? Okay, that's, that's typically what we do now. Here the exposure was, if you, it was estimated you smoked greater than 100,000 cigarettes in, a, in, in your lifetime, then you were exposed. If you smoked 99,999, then you weren't exposed. <laughs> yeah, that's questionable. But they did, that's actually what they did. Okay? It's from 1950, it was before what we know now about the effects of cigarette smoke. So it, it, you know, it gave them a little bit of a break. And by the way, this was the same hill that did Hill's postulates. Dolan Hill from 1950, the same guy. Um, so that's a, a stratification problem. And there's two different ones. And I'd like you to analyze them each separately. Okay. This is an asbestos exposure problem that's stratified by asbestos exposure. Okay. You'll notice there's not very many problems. However, <laughs> however, each one of these problems has embedded in it a lot of stuff to do, a lot of analysis. Okay. So that's why I didn't give you too many. As you can guess, this is what the the, the, the exam's going to look like. You're not going to have a lot of problems, but each one, just by its very nature, is going to be large. Okay, questions before I go on? Yes? I haven't looked at it yet, but is there any chance you can tell us exactly how many answers you're looking for, for question two or question three? Um, how many answers I'm looking for? Or I guess uh, what, what the uh, process of, because you're saying it's going to be. First of all, um, what I'll want you to do is evaluate whether or not it's a case control or cohort, and uh, based on what I tell you here. And so that's the first thing you'll need to do, is to evaluate whether it's a case control or cohort. Uh, second of all, you'll need to evaluate whether or not the strata, because here it's stratified by gender, well, both of them are stratified by gender. It's just the exposure is, is, is calculated or defined in a different way. Uh, then you'll have to evaluate homogeneity, is it meant that then choose whether it's mental hensel or, um, or um, standardized. Then you have to evaluate whether or not there is confounding. Confounding is the delta percent between the crude and the standardized or mental Hensel odds ratio. Then you have to evaluate the mental Hensel uh, odds ratio if it is homogeneous. Then you'll have to uh, tell me what the confidence interval is and confirm that, that mental Hensel uh, chi-squared. Then you'll have to evaluate the stratum-specific odds ratios or relative risk and tell me whether there's effect quantification. So the answers are, First of all, whether or not it's mantle, pencil, or standardized, and then whether or not there's confounding, then whether or not there's effect quantification. Simple enough. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the process that you go through is, is, is important. And the flow chart is important. OK. Take a look here. Our schedule. Now we chose schedule two. Today is analytical methods, which I said I was going to finish today, and indeed I did. Um, <clears throat> my um, sense is that this review session I probably should move to the, the week before the exam, right? Which means that we can start on logistic regression. Okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah, fun, fun. Uh, but don't you agree that the review session is probably uh, next week? I'll talk about the analytical methods homework. Okay. But um, I think that the practice problem set is best put forward to to the first the week before the exam. Does, does that sound reasonable? Okay. Um, Have any of you, 
And that now, I, now I'm, I'm, I'm going ahead for logistic progression. I have a question for you. Have any of you done um, linear algebra or matrix methods? You okay. have? Okay. Um, yes? Okay. Then that should go pretty well because I'm going to start out with a, a, a review of that because we're going to talk about some of it. Um, as a matter of fact, what I'd like to do, since we have plenty of time, is to start on that. Okay? Uh, and, and I'm not going to do too much of it. I know everybody's brain hurts after, after the last bit, but I would like to start on it so that I don't spend too much time next week talking about matrix methods so we can just get, get right into the to that. Uh, would you guys like to just go into it and finish by 5.30 or would you like to take a short break? It's up to you. Like a five minute break or? Just a five minute one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's fine with me. Go ahead and take five minutes just to stretch a little bit and uh, then, then come back about five-ish and I'll, I'll start with the uh, with the, the, the matrix methods. 